Hello and welcome to PV Tech. I'm Ben Willis and this edition is about PV in East Africa. Installed solar capacity in the region has yet to reach a level worth shouting about. But while attending the Solar and Off-Grid Renewables Africa conference we put on in Kenya last month, I noticed a real positivity in the mood of the delegates I met and an optimism for growth in East Africa as a whole. I spoke to several key players at the conference to discuss their thoughts on how to unlock the potential for growth in the area and beyond. Dexter Gauntlet from Navigant, welcome. We've heard a number of predictions about uh, the growth potential for, for solar in sub-Saharan Africa. You had your own projections. Where do you think we're, we're headed? Overall, I think uh, investors are comfortable in East Africa. Uh, the resource here is fantastic. Uh, the business case is here, so it's really just about uh, how much can be pulled together, um, how quickly. So there's no doubt that it's going to happen, it's just a matter of how quickly. We have uh, around 800 megawatts of people who want to generate and feed to the grid. Uh, some of these, uh, they are doing their feasibility study, but uh, around uh, 20.6 megawatts, two companies with a total combined capacity of 20.6 megawatts, they are already initialing a PPA, in the final stage, stages of doing a PPA so that they can generate and feed to the grid. And so there is a good uh, opportunity for that one, and that's for grid connection. Are we likely to see all of those going forward, or will some not happen? What, what's the status of those, those uh, projects in that category? Yeah, yeah some, of, some of them may not uh, go forward, because right now what they're doing is uh, confirm the technical feasibility study, which involves the uh, acquisition of land, to also involve environmental impact assessment, so if for one reason they don't acquire the land or they don't get the NEMA license, some of them may not continue. But uh, we are hoping a good number will be able to be feasible and continue forward. And all of these projects are looking to take advantage of your feed-in tariff, is that correct? Yes, they are all coming under the feed-in tariff policy. On the feed-in tariff policy, I suppose there are two main things. Um, well, it's all about the tariff itself, which is set at 12 US dollar cents. And at the moment, if you did use those numbers and the 12% indexation and you can't carry out a financial model, the IRRs you get, which is what investors are going to look at to put the money in to build those projects, are not viable. So so, um, you know, there are ways of overcoming this, and I think as Engineer Marithi from the Ministry of Energy put it down to its dialogue with the government, this is exactly where we're starting. To, um, we're looking at dialogue to improve the indexations, but also review how the feed-in tariff policy is structured. So that's what you'd like on to is it? Yeah. A closer look at how it all works and stacks up. And uh, how, how confident do you think you'll, you'll be in, in getting that, that review? I think working with the Ministry of Energy here in Kenya over the last three years, um, they are very understanding. They want to see those projects built as much as we do, and it's in their interest to reduce the cost of the final consumer. And obviously, they're also wanting to make sure that they're, they're not being overcharged on electricity tariffs. So, you know, they've set these tariffs on the basis of consultancy reports. And what we need to do is show them what the actual case is at the moment in Kenya and I, I think we'll, I'm highly confident we'll overcome these. Yeah. There are many opportunities uh, to invest in solar in Rwanda. Uh, we have a legal and regulatory framework uh, which is suitable for the development of solar. Yeah. In terms of the sort of ambitions that Rwanda has as a country to increase your overall electricity generation mm -hmm. capacity, um, how important is solar in meeting that, that goal that you have as a, as a country? We have a, an ambitious target to increase our generation capacity to 563 megawatts by 2017 yeah. uh, and uh, we think that solar will contribute uh, at about let us if we can get uh, 4 megawatt 40 megawatt yeah. yeah it will be uh, a big uh, part contribution, so significant for, for, contribution yeah significant contribution yeah. of solar to 
to gen power generation. I see. So yeah. mm -hmm. beyond those two projects that you talked about this morning, then you'll be looking to get other investors in from... from yeah, other for sure, for sure, sure. We are uh, still looking for other investors uh, interested in solar. Now this, this um, market sector has definitely moved now into the focus of uh, Trina wider strategy. Yeah. Yeah. So, the smaller scale. You know. Yes, yeah. yes, no, absolutely. It's part of our, our corporate strategy really to, yeah. to focus much more on these kinds of markets. Um, I think it's a very, um, very easy to, to catch uh, the, the reasoning behind that. It's um, a commoditization of solar panels that has happened. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, suppliers of solar panels. So it has become a bit of a, of a price fight here in this market. So the very innovative companies, they need to find also a way to differentiate in this market. And uh, so Trina Solar has actually launched a new business unit yeah. end of last year um, that will be focusing exclusively on off-grid, mini-grids and, and hybrid plants. And I, I guess that very much lends itself to Africa, doesn't it? Really? And that's uh, the focus um, naturally will be on Africa and Southeast Asia. What is it about uh, the sort of DG commercially driven type projects where you see the most potential? So, I mean, we like DG for a number of reasons. Um, one in that it grows with the economy, so it's a very sustainable market demand. Um, it's small scale, the time to develop is relatively quick. We started out initially as a turnkey developer, um, and so the clients were buying the projects outright. Um, and now it's turned into a bit more of a finance solution. But, you know, from initial discussions until full commissioning can be six months to 12 months. Um, compared to utility scale, you know, feed-in tariff, you know, this can be a number of years. So I think that we're dealing with customers who want solar. Um, we're not sort of tendering with the government. Um, they've got the demand. Um, and, yeah, so I think that the, the sustainability of it, I think, is most attractive for us. I think indeed the, the market is going to boom. There is the off-grid part of the, uh, the market that has been growing 15% per annum for the last 10 years and it will continue to grow 15% per annum. And that market we are already very active yeah, and we want to of course a, grow faster than the market so to, to take our share. For the more on-grid market you're talking more um, solutions yeah. instead of supplying components. Yeah, so we, we need to add a part to our business which is solutions and projects oriented. So that's more of a sort of EPC type? Correct. Right. Yeah, correct. If you look at announced projects, you're looking at about um, between now and 2020, uh, including for the entire continent, you're looking at about eight, uh, eight to nine gigawatts of just solar PV projects. Now, I would definitely classify that as an aspirational uh, goal. And if we're looking at 8.6 gigawatts, that means by 2020, cumulative, uh, that's a cumulative number. The cumulative investment represented by that is probably about 24, 25 billion dollars. So, you know, we're talking serious money. There seems to be a real will uh, amongst a lot of people to really kind of drive things forward now, not, not just in Kenya, but, but East Africa more broadly. Just, just uh, with your particular area, large scale, utility scale, how, how do you see things playing out over the next few years? Um, so I think Kenya will be the first country to move ahead with really large scale projects and I think that is because of the feed-in tariff policy. When you look around at Tanzania, Uganda, the policies are set for slightly smaller projects up to 5 to 10 megawatts whereas here you know, the feed-in tariff is capped at 40 and also Kenya in the past has shown you know the government is willing to dialogue. Uh, there's so many IPP projects built here. Um, we have a bankable off-taker Kenya Power. Uh, there are challenges of getting a PPA, there are challenges of negotiating everything, but if you really keep going, you get through it, which is seen by the success of other projects that are coming through. So it's kind yeah. of watch this space, really. Exactly. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time. It's much appreciated. Given the frontier nature of East Africa's solar market, it wasn't surprising to hear the reports of the numerous difficulties industry players face in developing projects in the region. However, it seems that the climate is really changing now and that manufacturers and downstream professionals alike agree that East Africa is poised for significant growth in the near future. Stay tuned to PV Tech for more insight and global PV news. Thanks very much for watching.
Thank you.